Hello again, and welcome to Interview with DJ Nocturna. I'm speaking with an author and a writer, Dr. Helen Stewart. She holds a PhD in sociology from Brandeis University in Massachusetts. And uh, she's a postdoctoral scholar at Harvard as well as, you know, and many, many, her CV is huge. But welcome, Dr. Helen Stewart. How are you? <laughs> I'm fine, and thanks for inviting me to come on to your show. DJ. Oh, yes, of course. Yeah. You know, I, I wanted to mention your, I mean, there was just so much, I mean, you're, you serve as a lecturer, you're, um, you're a professor, academic administrator, an interpreter of French for the U.S. Department of State. That's, that's amazing. And you're a radio personality as well. <laughs> I was a lot of that a long time, some, some time ago, depending on whichever it is. <laughs> I still yeah. work in French, um, yeah, 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 but yeah. I don't do interpreting for State Department anymore. On contract, yeah. And then, and then you served in in the uh, in in many boards, and one of them is the Institute for Educational Management at Harvard, mm -hmm. Women's Foundation in San Francisco, the Honolulu County Committee on the Status of Women, and of course, I met you here. Of course, I have a few weeks ago, <laughs> and um, I just wanted to, you know, I just wanted to say how when I when I met you, which was a few weeks ago, right at Sedona, yeah, the metaphysical store in in uh, North Nimitz Highway in Honolulu. There were, I went there to buy me um, a Palo Santo because I usually mm. buy Palo Santo, right? And uh, I, I, I also got me a singing bowl while I was there. And yeah. I, I saw this uh, bulletin on these boards and there were like four different people that were doing readings. Some of them were uh, tarot card reader, intuitives, and you were one of them. And I, I was looking at that and I'm like, immediately my eyes focused to you and I said, I got to get, it. I have to talk to her. I said, I, said, I, said, I told you this, right? I said, I yes. just talked to her. I mean, I I didn't know anybody. I didn't, I didn't know you. I didn't know anybody. I didn't, I don't know who they are, what they did, nothing. But I just felt like she's the one. Wow. And then I I, I said, okay, can I just, and I, I don't normally get readings like that. I don't. I don't mm -hmm. have time. And I just, yeah, of course. I, if I don't feel like it, then I won't do it unless I'm called to do it. Mm -hmm. And so. Um, yeah, and that's when I said, okay, well, I'm gonna go and do this and and see what and see how it is. And so we, I sat down with you, and then we had a talk, and then I discovered so many so many things. And I said, let's let's do the show, let's do an interview. <laughs> that was wonderful. And that then was wonderful. So you have a sense of how I work. Yeah, too. you have a sense of when I talk about doing business intuition or doing quote readings for business purposes you 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 now have a sense of what that looks like yeah I didn't even know and then now and then when you told me you're an author of a book I go what's the book and then you said it's right there <laughs> and then I said well can I buy it and they go no there's I don't have any you have to go yeah I don't it, well, there's only that's the only one uh, well how do I get that book so I bought the book and it's called seven seconds or less from gut feeling to bottom line in challenging areas of business and you wrote this book in 2013 and it's still very current today with 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 business and you are an intuitive yes you know to start out can you tell us you know for people that may that's listening and may not know what intuition some people don't know what that is can you just tell a little bit about what that means yeah i think for intuition pe people have different definitions um i see it i think of it as a blend of reason and other forms of knowing some people in the academic um, universe because they don't believe in this mind and consciousness stuff call it pattern recognition and they say basically an intuitive picks up on things that you've noticed from the past but if you were to ask me about Mary Jane in Omaha now or five years from now um, I would be able to get information about Mary Jane in the future and don't know her from Adam now. So that's not pattern recognition. It, there certainly are elements of recognizing things. But to me, it's knowing when you don't know how you know. That's what intuition is. You know something, just like when you said, I got to talk to her. You know something, you don't know how you know it, but it's so powerful. And it turns out to be so accurate that you go, that had to be intuition. In business, that word is not so acceptable. So you say gut feeling. Gut feeling is okay to make a decision in the corporate world. Yeah. More than say in, in other environments. 
So I call myself an intuitive because I don't leave, you know, you talked about my CV. I don't leave that experience in another room or outside the communication with a client. It's there, but the, it takes its place with all these other ways of knowing, including knowing stuff you couldn't possibly know. So if I'm talking with you one day and you're in the music industry and I'm talking with somebody else and they're in the banking industry and then I talk with somebody else and they're in the energy or big pharma, I certainly don't have that training. Yeah. How in the world would I be able to give them anything that's helpful? But you just know. It just it just yeah. it just it just comes. Helps. And it and I'm a sociologist and I'm I've been trained in org organizational development. I mean, I got skills, but this goes way beyond skill. It's knowing something, you know, with that range I just gave you. And I work with all of that, plus metaphysicians and artists, you know. So that's not domain centered. It's intuition centered. So can you tell us like, when did you first find out? When did you first found out you have this gift intuition because you know in, in <laughs> everybody has intuition right everybody but it, everybody it, a lot of people don't know how to use it or if they do right. they can't identify it you know right they don't recognize it unless it hits them over the head with a two by four you know <laughs> probably the best thing to say about that is I, I started recognizing it because I get in trouble for being everybody's business as a kid. I would know, I would know things I shouldn't know. You know, they don't really love each other. You know, eight year old. You know. Oh yeah. And and they're, and and, 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 and. <laughs> so I think, I think I wasn't conscious of that, and I didn't call it intuition, but I got in trouble often enough that I began to think maybe there's something else going on here, and then. When I we lived in my dad was an army chaplain, we lived in Japan, and that's one story that's in the book. And I came out of tonsillectomy surgery only speaking French. We had never lived in France, I didn't know any French, I'd never studied it. And a, my mother tells me they were running around the hospital in northern Japan, northern Honshu, looking for somebody who could talk me through the recovery of surgery. That got me to thinking that I was 10. That got me going. Wow. So you, and I've discovered you, since then, it's happened since most recently, actually, just a few two months ago. Wow. So when I had surgery. Yeah. So at that time you just started speaking in French. You had no no background in French whatsoever. And you just nothing. Speak. Nothing. Do, do you think and, and, do, do you think maybe that was like a, a past life that you had in, in the past life? I don't know if you believe in that, but I do. I, I don't know about past because I kind of think from my background that time mm. is kind of simultaneous and you, you you focus in different places. You can focus on the past or the future. But I do believe that I have been French more than once. And in uh, and I spent a lot of time in France and around French here. But I, I think I've lived in other times in in France. And I have a love for the language the culture um I, I i understand from friends that i lapse into it without even knowing but of course since that time i've learned to be fluent in french so how much of it is from another time how much of it is from training which i eventually got and worked as a professional interpreter and how much of it is who knows <laughs> but, but it's, it's a language that you can just easily pick up Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, like, I dream in it. I think of it. Yeah. 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 And my friends, my, my Parisian friends say that I speak the language without accent. So, you know, I, li I went to high school in France in the 1950s. Why am I still so good at it? <laughs> <You know? laughs> Got to be something else going on there. And so, but my uncle is fluent in French. So at least I have a little bit of company there. So when did you start finding out about your intuitive, um, how old were you when you found out that you had this gift that you can, you can feel things and intuitively? Um, you know, actually, after that Japan experience, I started reading the third eye in fifth, sixth grade. So I was 10, 11 years old. Why would I be reading the third eye 
the daughter of a Methodist minister reading this Tibetan Buddhist <laughs> treatise, you know, well, where does that come from? And then as a, an adult in the 60s, so I was in my uh, early 20s, mm -hmm. I started reading in a methodical way, studying, uh, attending seminars and workshop, you know, the usual things that we do when we get interested in something. But that was as an adult in, in the 20, I'm 80 now. So this started when I was in my early 20s. Wow. So it just kept going. <laughs> I know. It's so amazing. And then, and you wrote this book. Okay. And mm -hmm. so what does that mean? Seven seconds or less? I know it's about intuition that you can, I'll let you explain that a little bit more. Why did, yeah. why seven seconds or less? You know, one of the things I like to say is you can know anything about anything, any place, anytime, anywhere in seven seconds or less. But as I start, and so it's kind of a gimmick, seven seconds or less. Mm -hmm. The truth is seven seconds is way too long to get into the intuitive zone because we're so good with our minds and with reason. Uh, one second, two seconds is already a long time. So the truth is a nanosecond is the best. Yeah, yeah. You, you know, that's what For they me, say. a breath. You take a breath. Bah. And you're there. Mm -hmm. One breath. So how would you identify if that's an intuition and if it's not? Um, surprise is a great clue. I mean, you're surprise. probably used to it because you've been doing it for <laughs> years, but people that don't, right? They just... People who don't. Look for surprise. You kind of go, I wouldn't have thought of that. Or oh, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. weird. For, oh, let me give you my favorite, best example. Just happened yesterday. So we're going out. My partner and I are going out for shave ice. We're doing our morning errands. We stop at the Wyola Shave Ice little place down there in town. And we're sitting there. And there's this big family that comes in, sits and stands next to us. And all of a sudden... I hear the men say something like Brandeis. And you talked about my CV. Both my partner and I went to Brandeis University. So here we are in o uh, on Oahu, in Honolulu, at a little tiny shave ice shack. And here's somebody talking about Brandeis. So I wow. gathered up myself and I said, did I hear you say Brandeis? <laughs> we sat, we laughed, we talked for half an hour. They're like four generations at the university. Then we come home after this extraordinary meeting. And in the same day's mail is the 75th anniversary of our university's magazine. And the family that we had Shave Ice with is featured in that magazine. Oh, my and God. We, and oh. we are also featured in that magazine a few pages later. Wow. So this chance encounter involved two sets of people who don't know each other from Adam. We come home in your pictures of both of us in the same issue that we had not seen before we had shave eyes. When things like that had surprise, I mean, who could make that Synchronic up? Synchronicity. It's synchronicity. Yeah. So that's one, when you see things like this happen, you know, why did we go for shave ice at that time in that place? And why do they, they're tourists. They're just here for a few days. You know, what are the chances? So the more into intuition you get, the more into surprise and the unexpected. Well, that, you that know, if somebody that, calls that, you yeah. that you're thinking about, that's intuition. Oh, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I understand that completely. I, I totally agree with you, too. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, intuition is so vast, right? When I when I when I when I met you, I wasn't thinking that I wanted to know about my business venture. You know, that wasn't mm -hmm. that was just I just wanted to to come and talk to you. So like most people would m most people see see people, you know, mm -hmm. talk to someone like you because they want to know about the relationship. So yes. how, did you, how did you how did you get into the business intuition? Mm. You know, that's a that's a really good question, because it's not my I mean, I had done consulting. And management consulting, 
but I don't, I'm, I'm a sociologist. I don't consider myself, I'm not an MBA or, you know, I didn't go to business school, but I did become an academic vice president, the academic vice president for a business school on the East Coast. Mm, okay. And so I was around business school thinking, this was in the early 90s. And I would notice, I would go into stores and we just went into one yesterday and I was going, wow, they're really struggling. You know, I just go into a business and I would know what was going on. I'd be like the kid who got in trouble. I'd be all up in their stuff. And all I would do was walk across the threshold. And I would just know the, the company is strong. These two uh, workers are fighting. This uh, I know. I, place I, is understaffed. Yeah, go ahead. Especially the bank. You were saying something about the uh, bank. You knew yeah. the tellers were what something was going on there. Yeah. 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 It's it's it, wow. so you you can be a creative thinker and writer and all of that, and you can't go up and ask them. Oh, by the way, are you two fighting or are you having an affair? You know, you can't you can't do that. But based on what you feel, and the more you trust it eventually it comes out. So you may start, you may not know. And I got in trouble at a university I was working where I knew another vice president was not kosher, was not okay. And I tried to kind of hint to my boss that there was something off and he, he wasn't having it. And I just backed off. It took two and a half years before all of that unfolded. So you got to trust yourself. You can't go back there and wait, go, uh, where's my confirmation? <laughs> you know, you got to just grab and go, you know, you got to catch it. If it's for you, use it in yeah. ethical ways to, to know, to do well at what you're doing, to protect yourself and then let it go. You, you can't hold on to it. Yeah, I, I, I did read that in the book that you you specifically said it's about trust. You know, you, you yeah. just go, it's like you put it on the universe and you just trust it. Yes, you have to trust. And, you know, for a lot of us, trusting, at least I know in my experience, trusting myself, I can trust somebody else more easily sometimes than I can trust myself. You've got to trust yourself and you've got to trust that the universe is not all bad. Not everybody's a jackass. Not everybody's out to uh, do me in. Not everybody is uh, poorly intentioned. We just mess up trying to do what we think is right for our best interest. And sometimes it's not right. So, well, yeah. So I know that is the the business aspect, you know, these are, uh, what kind of companies do you normally work oh, with? Oh my goodness. I mean, they're just like. Uh, all the way from financial sector, big pharma, uh, uh, big box stores. I worked for an old school electronics company where that equipment is no longer in use. I worked for energy company software development, uh, metaphysical celebrity, um, uh, oh, uh, uh, import export, uh, trade within Europe, uh, between uh, Europe and other countries. Uh, I, I worked for, I did some work for a couple tiny countries. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. And it's, it's, and again, it's, I don't have that expertise in my, even though I'm 80, I haven't been able to pull all that off in, in one lifetime. It's something other than traditional, rational knowledge. It is not, ex, it is not domain-based expertise. It is something else. Yeah, and some sometimes it just comes out, and you it have just no, is there. You, yeah, you, you whatever it may be. Yeah. For for example, there was a guy I worked for, um, who I did I didn't know this was early uh, internet and all of that, and I did something for him, and it had to do with 
the cart before the horse. And I was getting all these, you know, I get these images and it's like, I got this image about the cart before the horse and I don't know what it means, but, and then he giggled because he said that what I was describing was whether it was front end or back end software. And that my metaphor helped him with his decision about whether he should use front end or back end front loaded or back loaded software. And all I got was cart before the horse. And then I started talking about something that apparently had meaning to him. I've forgotten now. You see? So it worked. I, yeah, I don't know. He said, yes, I got it. And I'm going, that's good. <laughs> I don't. That's the other thing about intuition. You don't, you don't always know. Um, there, <laughs> there was one man I read for in, in Paris and he came in for a session and he was so upset with me. Uh, that doesn't happen a lot, but this guy was really upset. And he later told me that he tossed the tape. We were still using cassette tapes in those days. He tossed the tape in the rubbish when he left from the session. When I went back to Paris, I used to go two or three times a year and do workshops and sessions there. He was the first person who signed up and was since that time the first person who signed up, he said, I was so mad at you. You told me all this. And I didn't want to hear any of it. And I tossed it. In the but you were right. <laughs> yeah, some people don't like to hear what, what, what's the truth. <laughs> but, you know, and right. What does right mean? Was it accurate? Was it um, well-intentioned? Was it, I like to give people... It isn't just you tell them good news or bad news. You know, will you tell me bad news? No. Is you will give them tools with which they can make enlightened choices. That they can decide yeah. for the health of their business. And the health of their business depends on their personal health as well as the company's health. Because if they're all over the map, they're going to be manage the company poorly so the business session is going to be a mix of information like a product is a thing it's a widget i will talk about the product that widget what it looks like what uh, i remember doing some stuff about what kinds of materials would go in the project whether it would be painted with cobalt something on it or had a beehive structure that's product that's clearly a thing but I would also talk with the CEO or whoever this person was in the organization about how they were feeling about their place, their role. So when these business people approach you, what 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 did they normally want to resolve? You know, did they have specific questions or just everything? Yes. 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 They usually come because there is some presenting issue. The company's struggling. Um, I, I would do some stuff on interest rates. I would do stuff on products. They would come because the person running the company felt, I'm thinking of one person who thought that he might not be the best leader, even though it was his company, because he was concerned about things going on in his personal life and couldn't give his full attention to the company. So that's kind of a blend. Um, we would talk about, huh, I had the trustees of a large company in the Mid-Atlantic come to me because they thought there was a ghost in the basement <laughs> and the employees, and I guess that's why they came to me because I look crazy enough to, to take it on, that there, there was a ghost in the basement and the employee, and they had a lot of equipment down there that they needed to run. And the employees didn't want to go in the basement anymore. So I worked with them on, believe it or not, as a business reading, figuring out what the ghost in the basement was interested in and how to help this ghost go on its way. And it turns out the ghost was the original founder of the company and didn't like the way the company was headed. So the trustees that I met with for that company we came up with a game plan. Everything was fine. 
no more ghosts. People could go in the basement. I mean, you know, talk about range between interest rates one day, widgets another day, and ghosts another day. You know, why do I love this? <laughs> I love what I do. <laughs> it's so much fun. I mean, when you pick up an intuition, but when you're talking to somebody, when you pick up something, do you pick up? Do you pick up the intuition because of that person that you're talking to, or is it more like external? Do and what do you mean by external? Like, because I, you know, you know, usually people can pick up things, right? Um, some people they they can oh, I had a feeling, I had a hunch, mm -hmm. but they pick it up because of the person they're talking to, or do you feel? Yes. Do you feel this is coming from that person or ev or everything in general? Just like the the uh, the environment of that individual as well. Yes, <laughs> all of it. Yeah. Yes, and and sometimes the energy will come from the person. Sometimes it comes from something in the environment. Sometimes the guidance I will actually hear a phrase. I always go like this. I don't know why. You're uh, here. What do you call that? Uh, what do you call that gift? Uh, uh, um, Audio sense. Audio something. Yeah. Whatever. Oh, clear. Uh, clear. Well, clear. Audient. Clear audio. Yeah. 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 Um, so it it varies. I like, and my style of doing readings has morphed uh, and changed over the decades. I like working with the name because it's so simple. So if I get intuitive information and I'm not prying or looking or going for it, I just feel things like other people do, or I'll see something or I'll hear something. But when I'm working formally with a client, say, I will ask for a name. And I always say, if I'm, if you work at, you know, 7-Eleven and you're a manager at 7-Eleven, and you want to know something about how 7-Eleven and your franchise is doing, I will always ask you as the manager of that place, I will ask for your name first because everything that I get about, say, an organization everybody knows, 7-Eleven, everything that we're going to talk about is through you and your experience and your wishes at that particular particular 7-Eleven or bank or insurance company or widget maker. So the name anchors everything. And then once we start talking, I'll ask for your name. Then I'll ask for the name of the company. And then you may tell me you're considering hiring these people. I will ask for a list and then I will rank order the list without knowing who's on there because names give too much information, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, pictures, you can see age and ethnicity. I will just ask for a name. And that way, that is talk about leveling the field. It's very hard to cheat <laughs> and use reason at some point, you're going to have to say it's 7-Eleven, but we will be into it before I even know the name of the company. Wow. Because my, you know, I read the newspaper like everybody else, you know. How How is that intuition and how is that because I just read the newspaper? Well, yeah, you know, um, yeah, it really is. Um, it, it's, it's it's intriguing, you know. I mean, I, I I've always had a lot of questions about intuition, you mm. know? because I know it's it, such I, a birthright for us. You know, yeah. we, you know, I mean, some people can, anybody can change a tire on a car. Some people do it well. Some people do it poorly. Everybody has intuition. Some people use it well. Some people use it poorly. No different. But is it there? It is. Always, always, always there. Do you feel like you're, you know, you've been doing this for for years. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like it's gotten sharper or do you feel yes. like it gets sharper to a certain time, a certain a certain month or? I mean feel it is the sharpest now it has ever been. I'm the oldest I've ever been, a little <laughs> decrepit, but guess what? I am fortunate because that, talent 
that 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 includes experience and gift are stronger now than they've ever been. So uh, I'm fortunate not to have dementia. I'm fortunate that yeah. my body problems are elsewhere. I mean, you know, my mind is still kind of hanging in a little while. So I'll, I'll, I'll go for it. But it's stronger now. It's the in terms of work. I'm the best I've ever been right now. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, weird. Yeah. Now, can anybody do what you do? I I know I know it takes. I mean, some people they they never pick it up, or they just. I mean, yeah, some people don't. Do they never explore that part of themselves? Right. Mm -hmm. I like, think the answer I, is yes, but just like you know, I can't draw worth diddly. You know, I'm a great intuitive, but I can't draw. Could I be taught to draw? Probably I'd be better than I am now. Some people specialize. Not everybody specializes in business intuition, and I don't know many who do it well, frankly. Um, everybody has access to it. Everybody has the tools. And if your interest matches some particular area, I'd say add a layer of intuition onto whatever you consider your other gifts and tools. It's not going to harm you, and it's going to help you. Can anybody do that? Absolutely. And that's what I teach. I teach it to companies. I teach it to people. And they and they use it. Yeah. Yeah. Do you get like um, premonitions? And is that something you also, um, you get dreams, premonitions, you know? Yeah. 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 One, <laughs> there was one uh, when I was doing my postdoc and uh, looking for jobs following the postdoc. And I had this really powerful dream. And it was somebody I had never met. And the phrase I remembered, it's in my dream journal, that I remembered was, shall we try it? That was the phrase that showed up in my dream journal. And in the dream, I wrote down the date. It turns out, and I didn't see this dream until several years after I had moved and several years later. It turns out that dream was my future figure was my future boss and in the dream it gave the exact date that I would start working at that university wow you know shall we try and I had a sort of um not always easy relationship with my boss and the boss said shall we try it in the dream and I thought that was so interesting the same date in the dream, a year before I was, and it may have been even before I was planning to move, within a year I was there in that job and that person was my boss. Wow. On that exact date. Go figure. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. Go figure, you know, am I gonna, am I gonna mess with that? Yep. <laughs> You know, and I think all of us, by the way, if you if you take the time and sometimes you get busy, take the time, find a little notebook and scribble something down when you wake up and see what happens. I've met people 30 years later that I had a dream about. And like one dream, they were two different people. One was British, one was American. But they were both in my life at the same period in time. And the dream said, who are Arthur and George? I met Arthur and George with whom I work. One was an engineer. Um, in the same period, in the early 90s. Well, go figure. What do you do? You just say, okay, I'll, I'll play, play, I'll play with this. Do you sometimes get scared when you, when you see something like an intuition of something? I mean, I don't know. I have, but you know, this is the thing, DJ, it's rare. One of the things about trust 
is I have come to trust that the information will only come in a way that I can handle. Yes, I have seen disasters. Yes, um, I remember hooking into the consciousness of this first woman uh, who died from lethal injection in some southwestern state, you know, and I was a wreck that day. It's it's rare that I'm afraid because the information always comes in a way, language, image, that I can handle. Yeah, they, that's what they say, right? They say that the universe gives you something you can handle. Yes. And, you know, I, my worldview, I, you know, because of this uh, Seth material, you know, I believe in a safe universe that when bad stuff happens, it happens through collaboration and it happens because it's going to serve some purpose down the road. So I don't, I mean, I was told when I was young, I only had a short time to live. So I don't fear death. And what other fear greater than that? is there. So if I'm not afraid of death, I don't like violence. I don't like torture. There's certain things I cannot tolerate. But have I ever been given information through intuition that harmed me deeply or hurt me deeply? Absolutely not. Never. I mean, you're strong for sure. Maybe, yeah, maybe it's strength, maybe it's trust. And then you, so this book that you mm -hmm. wrote in uh, 2013, mm -hmm. what made you want to compose this book and write about it? Because <laughs> there's a lot of material in here. I mean, it's good. It's a really interesting book. I've, I've never read a book on business intuition before. Mm -hmm. You know, I think it's because I was doing, I had been on retainer to a very large company uh, for about six years around that time. And that retainer agreement was ending and ended up abruptly. And I have had these clients. I mean, I've had some well-known clients. And I thought, I love this work. Why not write about it? And why not? demystify you know I don't have to sit with a turban and cross my legs and sit in a corner for you know 10 hours a day and go ah you do better next year <laughs> I figure you got to have language you can use in a boardroom I can put on my blue suit I don't have to bring my turban along I don't have to leave an arm or leg at home and we can talk uh, product line bottom line <laughs> Uh, personnel, human resources management. So we're speaking standard English, but I'm using this other source of intuitive information to, tr and that's why being an interpreter was probably the best job I ever had because you hear two languages at the same time and you have to translate. And when you are an intuitive working in the business domain, I have to take intuitive information translated into standard business English in a nanosecond. So it's great training. Oh, yeah. Great training. And it's not woo-woo. You know, I mean, like we're talking now. If I were doing a reading for you or a company, I would look like I'm looking now. I, I would not be going off into the blue ether anywhere. And when you do your reading, you don't do it with cards. You just, no. it just comes out. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Nothing up my sleeve. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, just there. I, you know, yeah. I, yeah. But because <laughs> some, some people, they, they have to work with cards, you know, mm -hmm. which is fine. There's no, you know, I couldn't do astrology if you paid me. It's so complex and so mathematical and so formulaic yeah. and you got, I couldn't do that. It's just a different talent so, and domain. It, in your book, you also talked about um, a lot about the importance of discernment in the practice of intuition. Yeah. Can you speak about that a little bit? Yes. And you know, DJ, I think 
that is probably the most important takeaway from the book. Uh, because no matter what tools you have, you've got to know when to hold and when to fold and when to walk away and when to run. You know, you've got to know, I'm getting this information like I got information about this other colleague. Was that information just for me? Did I need to tell somebody? Is it only for my edification? Do, do, is it, I mean, I have had a sense uh, with friends that I knew something was going on with them medically. Do I walk up and say, oh, by the way, I think you've, uh, you know, got this problem here. Let me help you. I'm a, I'm an intuitive. Let me fix it for you. Or, you know, people who do massage, who have to massage, touch everybody who comes within 10 feet. No, no. You have to wait to be invited. Mm -hmm. And there have, I'm, I'm thinking of all the readings over the decades, probably only twice that I can remember having to say to someone, I feel your life is in danger and I feel I need to let you know. And that's out of probably several thousand readings. Huh? Once or twice where I said, I felt I need to let you know. Normally, do you wait to be? And, and that was, I mean, it was during the course of a reading. So I didn't walk up to him on the street or anything like that. I would never do that. But it was in a reading. But even then, this, this, who's it for? Do I need to know this about this person? Do I need to say this to this person? And I have learned to trust that whatever issue comes up the word the appropriate words for that person in this moment will also come up which means i don't have to manage the flow i just have to start talking that's why i say you blather you know you blah, 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 you, you scribble you don't have to manage it because then your mind your rational mind is editing and judging Yeah. yeah I, discernment I, is key. Yeah. I just feel like, you know, we all have to do some kind of service for humanity, right? Yes. Yeah. And that's really important. And I think what you're doing is, is a big service to humanity. It's it's a big is 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 your work, you know, uh service. That's a some people don't do that at all, which is really like kind of um that's why they don't get what they want. <laughs> mm. Thank you, because service is purpose for me. Thank you for noticing. Yeah. 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 Mm. You know, um, another thing that you mentioned in the book is about the Seth material. Mm -hmm. yeah, maybe you could explain that a little bit. You know, some people, I mean, if, if people want this book, right? Mm -hmm. I know it's available. You want to tell us where, where they can get this book? Amazon, Barnes & Noble. It was produced by Balboa Press, which is a division of Hay House, uh, which Hay House. specializes. Oh, Hay yeah. House. It specializes in metaphysical books. Yeah. So it's their kind of self-publishing arm, and it's around. You can get it on Amazon easily, yeah. Barnes and & Noble easily. Yeah, so um, in the book, you talked about the discovery of the Seth material. Yes. Um, I think this was around 1972. She started doing sessions jane roberts um was a what's called a full trance medium and she discovered with her husband rob butts that they started getting information because they were playing around with the ouija board and then the information was coming so fast the ouija board was too slow so she just started talking and they talked between 1965 i think and she died in 1984 up until the very end of her life. She was in the hospital still uh, doing what was called this full trans channeling. And of all of the metaphysical materials that I've read, and I told you I started at around 10 years old, to me, it's still the best. There are now about 40 volumes of work that she wrote, her, her channeled source, Seth, dictated. She and Rob wrote together 
uh, their students who used to go to her ESP classes wrote about her. There are at least 43 books out there about that. And that to me is an anchor. And that's where I get the uh, notion of simultaneous time, the notion of good intent, living in a safe universe, um, having the, you know, one of his favorite phrases was the point of power is in the present that you can change not only your future and your present, but your past as well. So that if I want to say I'm hung up on something and I deal with this every day, I'm talking about as recently as yesterday, and I go back to some childhood experience that triggered it, that I could in this moment create an alternate childhood experience that would free me in 2023 from this dynamic that has held me back that I'm not because in order to change this I have to send a different girl and young woman through the pipeline right she's got to know when she got messed up back at the age of 14 that she had other opportunities and so in my decision making talking with you today I can go back to a time where there was a probable Helen, not expressed. I expressed the one who was messed up. But there was a probable Helen who probably handled it pretty well. I can go back and track her down and bring her into the present moment with me, which makes me more confident, self-assured. Yes, that happened to me, but I was not defined by it. It kind of reminds me of uh, the fourth house in astrology. Yeah. When you're saying that, you know. What is the fourth house? Home, uh, ancestral um, connections and things like that. Uh, yes. I, I mean, that's what I thought about. And uh, because, you know, there are alter alternate realities, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, you look at any any issue of Star Trek, any, any Star Trek or any of these shows, I mean, they're all exploring that all the time. I'll, I'll tell you, it's, 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 it's a worth a quick story. This happened yesterday when I finally realized why I am so um, constrained in public. Even when we were getting ready for the show, it was, you know, I got the wrinkles in my neck. Do I, how, how do I look? How do I look? And I realized that as a black person, I am culturally much more attuned to possibly getting in trouble in public for my perceived behavior. I'm 80 years old. Why would I still be thinking about that at 80 years old? But my behavior was going back to what you would call that fourth house, where would I naturally go up to somebody and touch them on the arm? In a mixed environment, no way. That's home. That's and that's cultural. What you called whatever that house, fourth house stuff. And I realized I was doing it yesterday. It was like freeing. Like that's that's why I'm like that in public. That's why I, I believe it. You know, I'll I I will be an eighty year old woman. I have a walker. You know, <laughs> sometimes that I need. I will have a walker hobbling along the sidewalk and I will move out of the way for somebody 50 years younger who's dominant group. And I, and I finally got it. It's like, take your space on the sidewalk, okay? Stop moving. And my partner would scream at me, stay on the sidewalk. Stop that. <laughs> it's, it's, it's part of that old stuff. Anyway, yes, I've been talking your ear off. Oh no, I, I'm I'm really enjoying the conversation, honestly. So, what? I I know you do a lot of business in um council. Uh, I don't know what you call it. Uh, you specialize in business intuition, right? Mm -hmm. But you do other things too, right? It's not just yes. relation. There are a lot of people come for relationships. Yes, uh, of course. You know, I mean, a, a business is purpose. Yeah relationship issues purpose you know 
And one of the things when I work with somebody, I can get a sense. I'll give you an example. Uh, and I have a, a trick for how I look at purpose, a little gimmick, how I look at purpose. And it's like you, you come into a life with certain innate talents. And when I see somebody's purpose, it, it may have to do with strategic perception, for example. They could use that talent to be a photographer. They could be an urban planner. They could be an architect. They could be a multimedia artist. All of these involve perception, you see? So the talent is fundamental. The expression of the talent could go a zillion ways. But if they're going to be happy in this life and somebody keeps them from using that gift of strategic perception, they're going to be unhappy in the workplace, whether they work for themselves or anybody else, because that fundamental talent doesn't get to be taken out for a ride. And so, you know, uh, the same gift does not limit how you can express it. Wow. I know you're, you're currently working on, on a book of essays. Mm -hmm. uh, it's in your website. Uh, it's called the, the your the the work your 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 book that's coming out is called Grids and Granola. Can you tell us about that a little bit? Yeah, it's grits and granola. My mom was from North Carolina, so it's Southern food grits. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and my dad was a Bostonian, and I'm kind of you know woo woo metaphysical. You're Hawaiian. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so there you go. So it's about a collection of essays about my observation of things going out on, on in the world. And it's more political and sometimes a little strident and angry and sometimes sociological. And then on the granola side, it is my offering when you're talking about service of how it might be possible to live in a non-binary world, in a non-divided world. And so I'm trying to develop this notion of and, ampersand, that we don't have to diminish anybody else in order to be who we are. You don't have to rob Peter to pay Paul, as the Christians would say. You don't have to take away something from anybody in order to be fulfilled. And I think that's possible crazy enough to think that's possible, but wise enough to think that's possible, perhaps. And so I'm looking, that's the granola side. How can we, which is, Hawaii is so special in that way. How can we be the world we want to live in without harming any other form of life? including the planet, what's called inorganic matter, which I believe to be conscious, animals, trees, you name it. That's my granola side. Grits and granola. If people want to, <laughs> when the book comes out, um, of course, it'll be available as well in Amazon and various streams, yeah. um, websites. Yes. You know, it, you know, being an being an intuitive back in the in the early days and early decades ago, it's kind of like you just don't even say it, right? I mean, people would just find it weird, right? It must have been challenging back then compared to what is now. It's more acceptable now, I think. Yes, now, absolutely. It's just it must have been really hard at that time, but you manage. <laughs> manage. People found me. Sometimes they found my first business client was an online client. Found me online. We're still friends today. Um, you manage, uh, you know, if you're working for a large company, I'm a management consultant. I have the training. I have the degrees. I have credibility. I have experience. I'm a management consultant. But at some 
point, I said, I'm going to stop having two CVs. I'm going to stop having two resumes. And in the last decade, I stopped having two resumes. I mentioned something about the Seth material, or I mentioned metaphysics, and I mentioned business consulting in State Department, all in one piece of paper. I said, I'm not going to do that anymore. That was big. Yeah, that, that, that was big. I was very that. closeted about all of this. Yeah. Because a lot of people in the business world look at that in a different light. They go, oh, wow, that's a little strange, you know, right? The mentality, you know, they have that kind the of higher up they oh. are, the more they look at it <laughs> in secret. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it's like, uh, uh, you can tell I'm a preacher's kid. And there, there was some New Testament story about Nicodemus who came to see Jesus. This is in the Christian tradition. Nicodemus sneaking up to see Jesus in the middle of the night. You know, people, people will um, find they must because we are all one. Mm -hmm. Will find ways to express the fullness of themselves. Yeah. Well, you know, he's getting, he's getting more and more accepted these days. And, uh, and of course, the book is available if people want to check it out. And you can even find um, what seven second decisions require. I know you have a you, you talk about. Focus, yes. Sermon, interpretation, mm -hmm. integrity and trust. Yes. Good. Thank you. Yeah. All yeah. of those we've talked, I think, about most of the uh, yeah, the integrity interpretation is key to just like discernment. What does it mean? <laughs> what, am I, what am I supposed to do with this? I see, I see a picture of a three-legged goat. <laughs> okay, yeah, right? <laughs> what does it mean? So but, you have to get good at that too. But but you know what? People really believe in these things, even though, I mean, they do. You know, if you, I mean, if you believe in spirits, <laughs> you can believe in anything, right? I mean, that you believe in the spiritual world or something unusual, different. I mean, you just do, especially now, more so, yes. more so than yeah. ever. Mm -hmm. I think you're right. And it's, you know, it's wonderful that you are willing to take on this subject because it also exposes you in a way. And you have a business and you um, well, I, I want that business to succeed. So... Yeah. Kudos to you for inviting <laughs> someone like me. On your well, I'm show. always different. You know, I've, always, I've, always, <laughs> I've always been different and I will continue to be different and I could care less. <laughs> Good for you. As yeah. long as I'm not hurting anybody, that's all that really matters, you know. That's exactly right. I mean, you, I mean, you talk about, in, in, your, in your website, you talk about individuation. Yes. And you have to be that, right? Yeah. You have to be. Nobody else can be you. Right. You got to, if, if, if not now, when? I mean, we're, we're all becoming more and more, you know, ourselves. I, I think there are more people that are just going, they're not in, in the box anymore. You know, they're coming out yeah. of the box. They're, out, they're thinking outside the box, right? Yeah. We're and like, we are being required to, aren't we? Yeah. We've got challenges facing us. So, you know, I, I know we got over an hour now, but can you mm -hmm. talk, can you talk a little bit about? Um, I don't know if you want to talk about this about the AI situation now with business and hmm. all. Yeah, you know, I have a little bit of a different take on that because I remember back in the '90s we used to do um, real time classes, chats. Uh, forums. We had over 75,000 people who were part of the New Age Forum on CompuServe. Some people don't even know what CompuServe is, but it was like big in the day. And so AI may be teaching us about our own possibilities, about not only intuition and what it takes to create something, but it may, one of the things that, that that AI, that early stage showed us was that we could live in different time zones, different countries. We could meet at the same moment through the use of technology. Or the physicists that I work with in the UK, we could find a time to meet because of technology. 
So I am a technophile fundamentally and an early adopter in a lot of ways. But I, because I believe I live in a safe universe, I want to be conscious when really off the wall things are happening. And I am with technology. But I think it's teaching us about ourselves. I think AI is teaching, like that old movie Tootsie that Duffman, Dustin Hoffman was in, how to be compassionate without the dress, how to be a better human being without the technology. And so I stay open, thoughtful, cautious, not in denial, but I think that's the whole point. And we're going to look up 50 years from now and realize that that's what was going on. We were being taught to be ourselves. Yeah. Well, you know, um, well, I, 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 I love this interview and uh, I'm so grateful you came on the show. And uh, I'm looking forward. Maybe we can talk again. <laughs> I was, all right. <laughs> all right. If I get this I mean, it's, it's out wonderful. There. I'm so glad that I, I took that. That uh, hunch. <laughs> uh, I, I, yeah, that, that intuition to actually go <laughs> and get uh, and, and see you. And, and you really did reveal a lot to me that made a lot of sense. So I, I, really I, I'm, uh, um, yeah, it's really great. I'm so glad that we got this. We got to, we got to talk about it. I got your book and. I did it quickly. I said, I'm going to get that book and I'm going to read it. <laughs> and I'm going to do that interview. And I just said, I'm going to do it. You know? Yeah. That was so fast. I said, oh. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 when, when I get the intuition, I know where I'm supposed to go. I and, really uh, appreciate it, DJ. This is uh, meeting you and getting to know you and now doing this is just fabulous. So yeah. thank you. Thank you. Yeah. For noticing. No, no, thank you. Thank you for, um, for uh, coming on the show and talking about your book and uh, and so many other things and um now if somebody wanted to reach out to you and and um get a a reading or some guidance what where's a good what's a good way to reach out to you and find you I, I know you're you're at uh, Sedona mm -hmm. North Nimitz Highway it's a metaphysical store here that sells yeah. um you know metaphysical things and all kinds of stuff and and of course you're there and. I'm on call there for uh, a few hours every Thursday. Uh, the best way to reach, you can always reach me through my website, which is easy because of the spelling of my name. It's drhelenstewart.com. That's easy. And that's S-T-E-W-A-R-T. A-R-T, yeah. right. Drhelenstewart.com. And, and I'll put every other link in the bottom of this uh, interview yeah. in my YouTube channel. Yeah, it's easy. So it says contact us. There we go. <laughs> As the French would say, fait accompli. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, thank you so much for joining me. Thank and, you, uh, and, uh, and if you're watching out there, you know, please like, subscribe, and share. And uh, and thank you all for joining me. And thank you, Dr. Helen Stewart, author of Seven Seconds or Less. And she has a new book coming out, Grits and Granola, coming out soon. So thank you so much. Thank you. Andrew. Okay, hold on one second. One second.